I think we can agree safety is not really a thing. Um, and I think we can agree that the FAA doesn't even really need uh, anybody's buy-in to change these rules. I mean, they've already, I feel like honestly, with what they did with remote ID and the commenting and things like that, they didn't need to do that. Now, maybe uh, technically, maybe there are rules that say, okay, yeah. we've got to have this period. They didn't have to listen to anything. And as a matter of fact, even if they broke their rules, they could probably make the case that airspace is, is a scarce resource and that it is already carved up significantly by uh, air traffic in terms of you know passenger jets and and things like that so that leaves the what sub 1000 feet sub 400 um that they would be able to declare as currently scarce um, there's an interesting thing though if you take the total volume of usable airspace around the world and divide it by the total number of craft capable of filling that I think the sure. odds of any two objects randomly colliding is like billions to one. Sure. So we'd, we'd, we'd have a lot of use of the airspace, but the airspace is such a huge resource. It's not like the radio spectrum, where it's at, compared to the amount of use we're making of it, it's, it's actually very congested. Our airspace is incredibly uncongested compared to radio spectrum. So I don't know that you, that would hold up in the court of common sense. Court of law is a completely different oh, thing. Oh, no, I actually, yeah. I actually think it would be harder to challenge in the court of law. Um, I think the court of common sense, I could draw just a couple pretty images and prove to you uh, because the, you know, as I think they're calling this age, the post truth age. Uh, <laughs> and so it, you know, there's, you've already got this whole group of people in most of the world that don't believe science. They don't understand numbers and they're very easy to mislead. I could, I make know some people... of them think the world is flat, but we know it's slightly dished. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. It's like a pizza pie. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, so I think I, th I think honestly the court of common sense was it doesn't exist anymore. But anyways, and that's the gonna... problem. It's the public perception that's working against us, and yeah. we've been vilified by the media time and time again because media these days again it is it, there's no such thing as journalism anymore. It's, it's what what's the catchiest headline we can write, and how can we back it up with some assumptions and, and fake facts? That, that's the way the whole media works, and it's been forced to do that because of the internet because it doesn't have this monopoly on distributing information anymore. So they've just had to go to the lowest common level. So the, you know the the newspaper in your town is just another version of Facebook, really. It's so, it's terrible, but there's no way easy way to sort of work around that. Every time I see a story in the paper which is obviously rubbish, I write in to the editor and say, "Please right. correct your facts," and I very rarely get a response because it's not sure. their interest to say, "Oh, we were wrong," you know, because yeah. uh, they don't want to sort of risk their credibility by admitting the facts. Right. Uh, so, Bruce, are you trying to tell me that uh, our newspapers and and online sources of information are clickbaiting us 